Remember how I told you on the website there is that, um, that is, there's that section called Feedback and Testimonials. It's hundreds of stories over the years. Um, most of the stories are not even on that list because they didn't have time. Just a few of them. We divided that whole list into vaccine stories, into detox stories, into chiropractic success stories. When you click on that button, feedback and testimony, you're going to get this whole list of hundreds of stories. Here, here are a couple that I can remember. There was a guy, came into my clinic one time, young man, about 30. He was George Bush's limo driver, Secret Service, but I treated him anyway. <laughs> Did the biotrain test on him. He had, he had this, this, this red face. He had this red face. He had these chronic allergies. Uh, he was a DEA agent. He had to crawl around down by the border in Arizona and in, in New Mexico for years and developed some kind of sensitivity. Well, he had been to every specialist at Walter Reed, you know, back east and all the geniuses giving him every antibiotic and every anti-inflammatory known to man. And it was getting worse. It was getting worse, worse and worse. And nothing was helping him. He was going to lose his job with the Secret Service. So in desperation, he came to me. We did this test. His blood looked really bad. The after looked excellent. After means, okay, what I do is I take their blood, record the blood. I'm going to show you this. And then I give the enzyme and the antioxidant, Flanagan's antioxidant. I wait 30 minutes. I wait 30 minutes and then I retest and then we see the difference. And so, and I made him give up all these weird ideas of this, these elimination diets and all these complicated things that he was doing, which were making him worse. Stop all drugs, simplify your diet, hydrate, and do these supplements. That's all he did. After 60 days, he was halfway better. He had to do the 60-day program twice, and he, he got his life back. He was completely cleared up. What I take away from Sean's story is this. You know, these people with chronic allergies, they come in and they tell you they've had chronic allergies for years. They've been on antibiotics for years. Here's a clue. If antibiotics are going to work for your problem, they work in the first few weeks. If they don't work in the first few weeks, you don't keep on taking them for years. They're immunosuppressive. It's going to be that much more difficult for you to ever reestablish normal homeostasis if you do that. So that's, that's an easy one. People coming into you telling you that they've been on antibiotics for two years. <laughs> you can improve their health 50% by just get, getting rid of the antibiotics right there. Okay, second one is there was a girl, lady from Florida. Okay, yeah, turned out she was the, the, the niece of somebody famous. Anyways, what's this muscle? Yeah, right under that. Masseter, right, right under that, she had developed three lumps, three lumps, and so she had these lumps biopsied, and, and they were malignant, right? So she did the usual slash and burn, chemotherapy, radiation, all, all the heaviest drugs possible. Six months later, they came back, and there were six. Now there's six. So she went back to the geniuses, and what do you think they wanted to do now? Exactly, Dr. Ralph nailed it. They wanted to do the exact same thing. Now let's see, what does the word exponential mean? Three goes to six, oh, well, that's doubling, okay. So she really didn't want 12 lumps in her jaw, right? So she decided to try something else. So she didn't have a, a great lifestyle, but it, it, was, it was so simple. It, she just was doing a few things out of balance. It was so simple to eliminate coffee, cigarettes, alcohol. It wasn't too excess. It was just a little bit or whatever it was. And the diet wasn't perfect, but she never heard of any supplements before. And she did this program. And I mean, the, you, you know how the cancer... You know how the cancer industry works, right? Especially with your families, you know, people in your family get cancer. 
when anybody suggests not following the regimented recommendation, you know, you get all this pressure from the families and it becomes this big family thing. And uh, so, of course, that, that was something that was majorly factored in. So it's very difficult for somebody to resist all that and to go the holistic route and let the, the healing powers of the body actually take over and give you a chance to survive. She went through all that, actually did it, and then she, but this, this woman was strong. She knew in the first, she, she would email me all the time. She, in the first two weeks, she knew, she, you know, you can feel, you get this feeling. She knew that she was equilibrating herself. She was calibrating herself and she was on the right path. That mental attitude is really critical in a healing process like this, especially one like this where you're on the way down. So of course the story goes, in just 60 days, not only did she have no cancer markers, no symptoms of cancer, all her other symptoms were gone and the, the lumps were almost completely gone. They had reduced on their own. And then she told me some six months later they were completely gone. So that was a very dramatic one, but it's not unusual. It's not unusual. Okay, finally the last one I'm going to tell you is Dr. Fidel. Dr. Fidel came in, he was a teacher at uh, San Jose City College, I remember. And he came in, he went into Kaiser because he just felt tired, you know. He just felt kind of tired and he didn't have his normal energy. And he started losing weight. He started losing weight. He wasn't really fat or anything, but he just started losing weight. So he went in and they they couldn't find anything specific. They couldn't find any tumors. They couldn't find any lumps. They really couldn't find any cancer markers. But they just said that it seemed like he might have some kind of metaplastic process going on somewhere. It was really vague. And so this is an incredible phrase. They actually used it. I saw it when they recommended to this guy prophylactic chemotherapy. Now, now, now that doesn't mean that they're going to give you chemotherapy and, and Trojans, right? That means they're giving you just in case chemotherapy, okay? So Dr. Fidel, he was like a professor of English literature or something like that. So he came to me and uh, we did the bioterrain analysis and I explained to him the whole program. 60 days, he was ship shape in Bristol fashion, back to his old self. So. I mean, I could just go on and on like this for a long time, but read some of these other amazing stories in the feedback and testimonial section. But, you know, I'm not like a genius. All I'm doing is giving the, the healing powers of the body, giving them a chance to, to, to heal us. We don't always have to do something. And sometimes we have to be patient. It takes time. It takes time for the body to heal itself. I mean, how long did it take for you to deteriorate this bad? How long did it take for these diseases to appear? So we have to be patient and we have to do the holistic approach for a while before things will improve. We have to be patient. So this is exactly what Tilden was talking about when he said this. All so-called diseases are increasing symptom complexes due to repeated crises of toxemia. That was the name of his book, Toxemia Explained. Tilden's thesis is that there is only one disease, and that is blood poisoning, toxemia. These diseases have no independent existence. See, you know, everybody goes to Kaiser, they, they go to the geniuses, hoping that they come back with some phrase, some phrase that they can tell their family, oh, now, now I know what's wrong with me, I have restless leg syndrome or I have chronic fatigue, or I have Lou Gehrig's disease, I have, you know, ALS. They want the phrases. So many of these are blanket diagnoses that are made in five minutes that don't really mean anything except as rationales for a drug regimen. Tilden continues, as soon as toxemia is controlled, they disappear, unless an organ has been destroyed. Will you pay a surgeon to cut out the effects of wrong living? <laughs> so my friend, one of my patients, I, I, when I see this slide, I remind, remind of my patients. I went to Asia for a month. 
I came back, and one of the patients that I've had for a long time comes back in and said, oh, while you were gone, I had stomach pain, so they cut out two-thirds of my colon. Will you pay a surgeon to cut out the effects of wrong living? Now, another friend of mine, he's actually a chiropractor. This guy, what do they call it when, uh, if you're overweight, they, they do the gastric bypass, right? It's like they bypass your stomach. So it goes from your esophagus to your small intestine, that's, and that's going to diminish your appetite, you know? And he's perfectly happy. So will you pay a surgeon to cut out the effects of wrong living? This is deteriorated thinking. It's, it's faulty thinking. Okay, great. Now, one of my main sources back at the time when I was trying to discover all this, you know, because especially today, it's even more confusing. Everybody's the expert on nutrition, you know. But here, here's the real guy, Wesson A. Price. Here are some of the places that he went and, and spent time with. He, he lived in these places. He didn't just visit them for the weekend. You know, it took him three years to do all this. And what, what did he find? What did they have in common? One thing they had in common is they were all sequestered from the rest of the world. Whenever I say that, I always remember one day about, one morning about four years ago, five years ago, I had to fly one morning from Zurich to Firenze, Zurich to Florence, right? And it was a beautiful sunny, sunny morning, so we're, we're flying across the Swiss Alps there. And, um, you know, some of the Swiss Alps are freaking 25,000 feet, you know, and the airplanes are flying like 30,000 feet. So, like, you look down there and they're right there, you know. And um, then you see, but what you see is you see the valleys. You see the long valleys in between the Alps and you, you realize that, and you see these little bright crystalline sparkling little villages in the white snow and then you'll see a mountain and then you'll see the next one and you realize that these guys didn't party very often because there weren't any roads that went across the 25,000 foot mountains you know what I'm saying it was like really isolated and sequestered so that idea is pervasive throughout Weston A. Price's book that these these the healthiest people on earth, they lived in locations that were physically cut off from the rest of the world. He called it cut off from the foods of commerce. Their foods and their diet came from their own immediate environment. Fiji, Eskimos, Seminole Indians, Canadian Indians, Scottish Primitives, Melanesian, Hawaii were some of the places that he went, right? Okay, so now I'm going to give you the four categories of foods for the New West diet in a second here, but if you forget it, the short version, really easy to remember, for 60 days we're going to be no refined carbohydrates, that means no white sugar, no white flour. Number two, no pasteurized dairy for 60 days, no milk, cheese, butter, ice cream, yogurt if it's pasteurized. Number three, no hydrogenated oils. Okay, which means you have to, we're going to do this too. Uh, you're going to have to you're going to have to read the labels of any packaged foods you eat, and uh, so actually we're going to do that in a minute here. Okay, so now categories, categories. I divide food into four categories. Here they are, four categories for the 60-day program. Right, category one, unrestricted. You can eat as much as you want with some moderation. Rarely and non-nutritive reactive foods. Okay, now in the 60-day program, we can only eat from category one and two. This we don't eat from for 60 days. So now let's go over each one of these categories separately. Category one, unrestricted. Fruits and vegetables. Sugar chapter, I have a chapter called Sugar, the Sweet Thief of Life. That means you don't know the difference between simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are like an orange, a banana, an apple. Contains within itself all enzymes necessary for its complete breakdown and metabolism and uptake by your cells. So, fruits and vegetables, unrestricted. Good water between one to two liters. Okay, I'm going to tell you the short version of this. I went all through this whole filter thing. 
And then I just realized um, we are so lucky. We live within driving distance of five Whole Foods here. Even, even Safeway has Icelandic water. You know, I, I was in Oslo in, in Norway. You go to the, you, in, you turn on the tap in Oslo, it's like champagne. No, the, the water is so pure and delicious there. So here's the thing. You know, I, I, I know all about the expensive water fillers. I know the whole Kangen thing. I know, I know, I, I studied it way too much. Here's what I do now. It's so inexpensive. Voss water is two or three dollars a bottle. Just buy, you know, the high-end waters. Eterna from New Zealand, Icelandic, Voss water from Norway. Why buy these expensive filters and you're going to have the trashy fluoridated water in, in the Bay Area and you're going to try to make that into potable water? That's ridiculous. You know, we are so fortunate to live. That's one of the good things about living in California. We should take advantage of it. Uh, get the high-end drinking waters. That's my opinion. That's what I do. Okay. Juices from the fruits and vegetables. The best juice, if you don't want to squeeze your own juice, the best juice, of course, to buy is Evolution. That's the new one. They have it at Sprouts and Whole Foods now. Adwala used to be good, but then Adwala, they, they, they're, they're not good because they no longer organic. So Evolution is the best unless you want to do your own. Just so it's no concentrate. That's the main thing. So there's no concentrate, no sunny D, no sugars, you know, no trash like that. Okay. Selected nutritional herbs, beans and rice. Here is your usable, complete protein. Your usable, complete protein. Find some bean that you like, organic beans, brown organic rice, of course, we're talking about. That combination, you know, for bodybuilders, for athletes, for people who, have, for people who are anorexic, people who have cachexia, all those challenges. Here is your usable, very, it's, it's, it's metabolically inexpensive. Metabolically inexpensive. In other words, if you get, you know, New York steak, Soren steak, yeah, that, that's, that's a good source of protein, but your body, it's so expensive metabolically. You have to use so much metabolic energy in order to break that down into the in, individual, you know, peptides and amino acids and build up your own lean muscle. Here we are, much simpler beans and rice combinations as a complete protein. Here's category two now. Category two with some moderation. This is, this is okay in the 60 day program with some moderation. Organic meats, raw dairy, eggs. Okay, here's, forget about the egg discussion and is it good, is it bad, is it gonna cause cholesterol, all this. Cage free organic eggs. You, eat them, soft boiled eggs. Don't fry them with that trans fatty acid butter and oil. No, just poached or soft boiled. That's how you eat them, right? Here's your new salad dressing. Lemon juice or vinegar. That's your new salad dressing for 60 days. There's no oils for 60 days. No cooking oils, no salad dressing oils. No oils, except for supplement oils is okay, but no cooking oil, no salad dressing oil for 60 days. And this is extremely important. Grilled or raw fish at least four or five times a week. EFAs, we, this is the prime source of our EFAs. We're gonna talk about that. Clean soups. It means it doesn't say Campbell's on it. It means it didn't come out of a can. It means you made it from scratch. That's clean soup, organic materials. And whole grains, whole grains. So brown rice, whole wheat. But th this is what the healthiest people on earth, this is how they stayed healthy and lived long lives with no degenerative disease. Okay. Now, category three. Now, this, I, I say rarely, and I mean rarely after the 60-day program. In the 60-day program, these foods are forbidden completely. If you want to reward yourself or have a treat food sometimes after you're completely clean and healthy, well, that's okay. Then here's what you may snack on if you want to retoxify yourself. <laughs> Processed pizza, commercial cheese, canned foods, Alcohol, refined carbohydrates. Al remember, alcohol is the refined carbohydrate, right? The refined carbohydrate. Uh, pasteurized dairy, right? Milk, cheese, butter, ice cream, yogurt. Cooking oils and seeds and nuts. Yeah, there's no seeds and nuts in the 60-day program. No seeds, no nuts. 
Okay, and then finally, we're in the category of clogging foods here, which include chips, fries, soft drinks, donuts, hydrogenated snacks, <laughs> margarine. Okay, I just settled the butter margarine dilemma. Forget about margarine for the rest of your life. It's trans fat, right? Mayonnaise, no, ma no more mayonnaise for you. Diet soft drinks or diet anything. Diet anything uh, in my in my sugar chapter. I go I, I, like half the chapter is is a whole exposition of NutraSweet aspartame. You know when when whenever you see the word sugar free, how can it possibly you know you go to Marie Callender's and they're going to give you sugar free apple pie. How can that possibly taste sweet if there's no sugar in it, right? Because they're using NutraSweet and aspartame. So you, you're getting a carcinogenic chemical to make it taste sweet. Right. Soy in any form. Soy in any form. Edamame's, you know, not the worst of it. The worst of it is the hydrogenated oils. That's where most soy in this country goes to the production of. At this time in America, <laughs> actually this only took a few years for this to happen, but what percentage of soybeans grown in America is genetically modified? No, 100%. 100%. Monsanto, it only took them five years to do that, starting in 1996. Okay, and finally, coffee. Sorry for the bad news. Actually, there was a Starbucks across the way. Uh, we'll talk about that, oh, okay, in a minute. Oh, here we are. Okay, so no seeds. Why no seeds? Because you know, one of the things that we're going to talk about enzymes, the purpose of enzymes is to clear the tract and to clear the blood. We are adding back the enzymes that have been removed from processed foods. So seeds have enzyme inhibitors in it to keep them from sprouting. Does that seem like a good thing to take at, at the same time when you're trying to add extra enzymes into your tract and blood. Are we going to take in enzyme inhibitors at the same time? No. So that's why no seeds. Second, second thing is no nuts. Now, of course, some nuts, like raw nuts, have some, some kind of food value, some kind of nutritive fats in them. But my opinion is one of the, our primary objectives in the 60-day program is to clear that tract, which is blocked. Nuts are very difficult. They're very dense, very difficult to digest. We don't want to take in anything that's going to further inhibit digestion and clearance and breakdown of foods. So no nuts, okay? And finally, no oils. The only oils you can have in the 60-day program are supplement oils, cod liver oil, fish oil, flax oil, you know, prim even evening primrose oil, all that is fine. Supplements, but no salad dressing, no cooking oils. And again, that's the same, same theory. It's too dense for a breakdown. You know what I discovered? What a lot of people discover when, when you say, okay, you can't have cooking oils, they, they'll, they'll still use their wok, but instead of putting oil in it, they'll put water in it and just try to cook something at a lower heat. And so they, they, it's a workaround, right? Okay, so I know a lot of people don't like me talking about problems with coffee. I'm not interested in uh, coffee enemas. I'm not interested in reading things about the antioxidant value of coffee. You know, these are, uh, what do they call it? Controlled opposition by the coffee industry. Here, are, here is the science behind coffee. This is the short version of this. Here's what coffee, some of the physiologic detriments to your body that coffee really does. Ready? Vasoconstriction. Does that sound like something that we want to do at the same time when we're clearing the arteries? It lowers the pH of the digestive tract and the blood. So there it is. I mean, acidification, acidification of the of the blood. This is the primary cause of osteoporosis. As the blood is, is it becomes, you know, all the all these trashy foods, all the soft drinks we drink, coffee, it acidifies the blood. What's the normal survival pH of human blood? Guyton says 7.3 to 7.45, right? When you go below that, the body will make you survive by the twofold buffering system. What important mineral does the buffering system require? 
Of course. So it takes the calcium, after it uses up the calcium in your blood, it, it leaches it out of the bones. So there is no doubt that, that uh, co coffee is one of these blood acidifiers. The other thing about coffee is it kills probiotics in the colon. We're going to talk about that in a minute, what that means. It exhausts the adrenals. It's not giving you energy. It's giving that, that adrenal override kick, that, that jolt. And that, that jolt, we, we pretend like it's energy. It's not really energy. It's a drug. It actually has a net negative effect on energy because of all the metabolic energy the coffee requires in order to try to get it out of your body. That's sympathetic override. Yes, I just said that. Premature aging. You know, people drink coffee all the time. They, they look older than they should. Uh, of, unless it's organic, really high-end coffee, it's going to be herbicides, pesticides. Okay, so that's just some of the things. So don't get me started. Okay. Okay, we're, we're right on schedule here. 